Welcome to Dudes of Hazards Radio. I'm your founder and host, Johnny McCarty. We got a full set in here today, so let's go ahead and start with uh, introducing who's all in for this episode. What's up, dudes? Co host Brad Nagley. Glad to be with you guys on this pod again. Hey, you guys. Max is back. Max is back. Yes, we are. <laughs> Wait, we. We. <laughs> we. Well, I mean, you know, it's him and Max Justin. It's his alter ego, Max and Justin. Yeah, alter ego and Justin. Yeah. Combined into one. Who uh, else we got in here today? Stephen Bell, member of the dudes, having fun. Yeah, hey, Jade Bell, guys, uh, new to the dudes this year. Just glad to be here. First time on the pod. Awesome. Thanks for coming in, guys. Uh, as you just heard, they're both, you know, new to the dudes. Uh, first time on the pod for both these guys. Uh, this is going to be an exciting, I think, pod to talk about. You know, in your short time being involved with the dudes, you guys have been involved, uh, to say the, the the least. I mean, coming out to our events, having us out there at Crockett and hosting and being great with that, which we'll touch into. Um, I'm sure you guys have got to witness some good golf shots from our guys and probably some less than stellar ones. Probably one a little bit more than another, uh, but look forward to hearing from that. Um so yeah, what's what it like being on your first podcast? Uh, a little nerve wracking. Yeah. There's a lot going on right now. <laughs> yeah, Cameras, he, mics, there's everything. I'm a little, a little scared, but it's fun. I'll relax. <laughs> Max is still sitting in work email, so. Yeah, his brain's fried. He doesn't know he's here right now. <laughs> <laughs> he really is sitting up here crunching at work emails. He's like, I don't right, think I have right. anything to say until the club notes later, so I can buy myself about 10 more minutes over here. Psychopath. Man, that's been a day. Cheers to it. Cheers to it. Drink up. Yeah. yeah. To it. Day's Cheers over. To it. Yeah. Almost. Now, this is the fun part of the day. I mean, yeah. you, you might still have this on on deck to do, but I, I don't think people come in here feeling like they they, they work, unless your name's Mitch, who actually is working, producing this for us. So thanks, Mitch. You're the man. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, so what's been good with everyone since last time we've talked? Brad, what's, uh, what's been up with you, man? Not much. I think I set out on the last pod. I... Uh, had a uh, event that I had to be at, but uh, that's uh, not much. I'm getting ready to get head into the summer. Yeah, summer Gearing season of golf. Oh yeah, I don't know if I'm ready though. I like this mild weather of golf. I, I, I really do not like playing in 90 degrees. I'm with you. That's true. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. It's me, nice. Me Today and Stephen nice. walked nine before we came in here, and we were like, "Yeah, this is probably the perfect temperature to walk nine for." Mm-hmm. Well, it was so easy. I mean, just perfect weather sitting here. Uh, Mid-May is we're recording. Was it the 15th, I think, today yeah, or 16th, 15, something 16. like that? Um, about about just under two weeks before this episode's airing, and it's like, okay, this is great weather out here. Yeah, I'm with you. That that 92 and sunny and just the humidity blanket. I'm, just, and you're I'm like, not a fan of standing over the ball and having sweat go down my ass crack. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, who is? <laughs> Justin's like, I mean... Actually, <laughs> Justin, what's or Max? What's what's been good with you, bud? Uh, it's been going good. Um, yeah, as everybody sees, I'm working a lot. Yeah, you know, as always on the on the phone. No way. Uh, been playing a little bit of golf here and there. Been enjoying it, and then honestly, just enjoying a little bit of the lake days now. Recently, yeah. starting to warm up. Yeah, that's one of the nice things. I mean, yeah, maybe we're drawing these hot summer days soon, but that's also an increase for the lake days, which. Yeah. I have its own positive, I guess, upside. I mean, it's hard to argue without being on Watauga or South Holst and Boone, wherever you go. I mean, a day on the lake's a good day spent. That's where you got to be when that weather turns hot. Yeah. You got to get the reprieve out there on the water. Yeah. After, after playing an 18, morning, seven, seven, the 7 30 tea time. 7 30 tea time. Get it out. I mean, right <laughs> when the peak heat's coming in, you're, you're on, on the lake. Yep. Yeah. That's it. Boom. Um, we're golf experts. So. Uh, basically if you're hearing this, <laughs> this is your game plan for the summer success series. Uh, you go and play 7:30 tee times, 18 holes, hit the lake, end up at the Marina by four 35. Sounds about right. Food, food. pictures, <laughs> yeah, pictures with the wife or whoever you're out there with. Yeah. Um, good times. Pictures, not pictures. Like pictures, pictures, pictures of beer, beer, beer. Oh, cheers. see, yeah, that's actually much better than pictures with the wife. <laughs> I figured that was like getting. I, I figured that was getting like you're getting roped into that, and you just realize that's part of the gig for the day out on the lake. You got but, golf and lake day. They got pictures. <laughs> that's a fair trade. I mean, what <laughs> nine hours of happiness for me? It's you're a better man. A couple, <laughs> couple extra Instagram likes for you. It's a good trade off. Yes, yeah. that's solid. 
Well, let's go ahead and jump into our podcast uh, rundown so you guys can kind of hear what we're talking about today. All right, guys. So first, we're going to head into drinkings with the, drinks with the dudes. Uh, then we're going to dive in a little bit <clears throat> to our uh, featured guests of this week's podcast, Jade and Steven's background, get to know them more, club notes. Um, then we're going to hear a quick ad of our advertisement advertisement from a club sponsor. Um, we're going to head into a main interview, and then Hazard's Time. Uh, you guys know it. You guys love it, Hazard's Time. Um, and then we'll close out the pod. Have we ever hit the five-minute mark? Like once we had to have, right? First. At one point. Like, we're looking over the Mitch here for this one. Have we ever hit the five-minute mark on done. Hazard's Time? You hit it every time. Over it, though. Yeah. We've never been under five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there you go. Okay. I, we, I enjoy Hazard's Time, so it's not a problem. Yeah, perfect. Last year, Hazard's Time used to be five minutes, and we realized, like – our average median listen time of Hazard's time was like 13 minutes and 27 seconds. So we're like, we're doing a really bad job at this five minute mark. So we bumped it up to 10. It's still not doing great at nope. hitting that, but we're, we're working on it. All right. So drinks with the dudes. All right. So it looks like we got a little bit of a variety in everybody's hands here today. So I guess I'll, I'll start it off. Yeah, go ahead. So I've got a Yeehaw IPA um, from local here in Johnson City. It's not bad. Not bad at all. Honestly, it's, I mean, it's a little heavier than what I would like. It's definitely something that I can have a couple of, but for the course wise, I would probably go a little lighter for me. Everybody knows I like my liquor. So. What's, what's the percentage of that one? Um, 6.9. Okay. Is it, is it pretty solid? Yeah. Not bad. Nice. Um, over here, I got Montucky cold snack. Um, Jade brought this in for us. I'm kind of stealing his thunder a little bit off the bat, but I'm, I've never had this before. Um, it's, uh, I thought it was an eight percenter, but it says eight percent back to local causes. So that's a little different. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh man, does anyone see the percentage on here? There's 12 ounces. Not there's, alcoholic. There's, there's, there's 12 ounces of refreshment. It says eight percent back to local causes. I have no idea how strong this is, but the good news is. Later this year, me and Jamie are going out to Montana, and this beer on its can, so it has to be the truth, just like the internet, it does say the official, unofficial beer of Montana. So this seems to be fitting for me yeah. to be having this. I like it, but now I like it even a little bit more. Yeah. So thanks for bringing Cheers. it on out. Cheers, Jade. You're the man. Absolutely. Steven, go same ahead and tell thing. us. Yeah, you, we, we know what you're drinking. but Yeah, I'm drinking the same thing as them. Um didn't notice the eight percent, so we might have some non-alcoholic beer here, but pretty good. Well, no, this is eight percent back to local causes. Is the local causes us right now? Then I don't. <laughs> that's I don't a good think point. He has a valid point. <laughs> that's that's what I'm wondering here. <laughs> we are. I don't, we are I local causes. <laughs> so someone investigate this. We can't under, be the local causes. Underprivileged golfers. Yeah, like or overprivileged. I mean, however you spend it. Don't know. Um. Yeah, someone's gonna have to do some investigation on this. I'm. I'm now curious as to how this shakes out. Um, what if it says on the box? I don't see it anywhere on the can. Well, Ain't what do you think of it, Stephen? It's not bad, but not pretty good. But it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was it's it's like the, the the most five you can get of a beer. Well, okay. You guys will be very disappointed in the percentage of alcohol in that. <laughs> Why? It is a non-alcoholic beer. Are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. It's <laughs> <laughs> How much? Only four. So it's pretty much an on alcohol. I was beer. about to switch straight. I was <laughs> start drinking gin. Jay got a little aggressive. <laughs> so Jade's first podcast, he comes in and brings us non alcoholic beer. That that would not have been a recipe to get an invite back. <laughs> just, just throwing that out there early on, but we'll let it slide. Um, what do you think of it? No, I. I mean, I can believe it's only four percent. It's pretty yeah. light for a yeah. lager, actually. Loggers are usually a little heavier. I like, uh, generally when I'm out on the course, especially in the heat, I like something a little lighter. So this is actually probably a pretty good course beer for me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's solid middle of the road, five or six. If you guys are normally out on the course and you know, it's your, you know, your choice. Yeah. What do you guys, what do you guys happen to drink? Lately for me, it's been truly just plain simple at the door. Yeah. So. Yeah, nothing, I mean, I, nothing I, too crazy. If I yeah. if I go with crazy round of drinking, it's I broke a Maverick a couple weeks ago, and 
a lot of liquor involved. So I got to keep it calmed down with just the Trulies and keep it light. <laughs> okay, okay. Fair enough. Noted. No, no, noted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to have to get brought back up later now. So thank you. Those Trulies are pretty high percentage though too. But I'm a lot that's, happier that's on those than dark liquor. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. fair enough. That's facts. How about you, Jade? What yeah, is, I mean, I, I'm an easy, old-fashioned, domestic guy. Yeah. I'll drink Bush Light or the Ultras are good during the hot days. So yep. whatever. Hard to argue with that. I mean, I feel like <clears throat> hot summer, long day of golf, and like, yeah. especially trying to pace yourself, you know, you got a long exactly. day out there. Ultras are pretty easy to, to yeah. deal with. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Brad, what do, you, what do you got today? So I'm drinking on the, I had it before on this. It's solid. Just so happens to be right next door to the studio, but the Johnson City <laughs> Meditari IPA, um, I like it very good. Um, I'm a I'm an IPA guy. If we're kind of like hanging out, casual drinking, dinner, hot summer day on the course or the lake, Miller Lite all day. Yeah, you just you you can't be pounding those like you're yeah. like oh cool. Not only did it, for my lake days, I just have two steaks and uh, like three baked potatoes, but now. I mean, I just like IPAs sit on you so heavy on a long day on the lake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't be messing around with that. Well, guys, we got some new people on the pod. I mean, you've uh, at this point probably recognized my voice. Brad's obviously the all star, or, or probably our club favorite special <laughs> guest, Max Kelly, because who doesn't love him? Uh, but we got some new guys on the pod. So, Jade, Steven, why don't you guys each take a couple minutes, uh, tell the dudes a little bit about yourself, maybe where you're from, just kind of whatever you want to share. Right on. So originally I'm from Oklahoma. I grew up there on wheat farms, played all kinds of sports all through school, mainly basketball, baseball were my primaries. Um, I started getting into golf, just something to do with some buddies and, uh, Enjoyed it, played it off and on for a few years. Uh, got married really young, 19, to my high school sweetheart. Um, a few years later, Stephen came along, and I needed something with a little more security and uh, some better health benefits than what I had, so I joined the military and did 20 years in the Air Force as a weather forecaster. Early in my career is when I really started picking golf up a lot. Um, weather forecasters, we work shift work. 365 days a year so I'd work a graveyard shift and be able to go to the golf course on the base and as a junior enlisted guy I could walk the course for like four or five bucks something like that so I'd get off a graveyard shift and go walk the course super cheap just to wear myself out so I could go to sleep around that time Stephen was probably three years old or something and I'd take him out there with me and let him hit one off the tee put one so we did that that's kind of really when I started getting into golf and then uh, the wars kicked off, did a lot of deployments here and there, kind of got out of it for probably a good decade, maybe 12, 13 years before I really started p- picking it up, getting serious with it again. So I've really only been playing serious again for four or five years, but I'm no near, nowhere near as good as I was at one time. Don't know if I'll ever get there again. Um, after I retired out of the Air Force, we... Pretty much could move anywhere we wanted. My wife's got a good career. She works from home for a company out of Colorado where she's from. And we made a short list of good states and good locations and veteran friendly, low cost of living, good people, beautiful scenery. And we ended up here. So that's kind of the long and short of how I got to be here in Johnson City. That's a familiar story. I mean, that's that's really how my parents found this place when they were getting out of the military and they were like, kind of did the same thing the same check boxes and yeah and ended up here so it's pretty cool steven uh me i i mean like you said came along i was two or three years uh but born in oklahoma so went went to college there at oklahoma state university but before that i was military kid and moved every i think the shortest time was three years in hawaii moved from hawaii to Nebraska, stayed in Nebraska for seven years, then moved to Missouri. Uh, from Missouri, went to back to Oklahoma where I was born. Um, he was stationed there, born there as well, raised there. And uh, so we just, I kind of went back home for college, Oklahoma State. Yep. Uh, I grew up a fan of that. And then um, it wasn't until, I mean, I played sports growing up, football, basketball, baseball. 
baseball on the offensive side, not the strong suit. I like to run in, I like defense, but I could not swing a baseball club for to save life of me. So I think I kind of lucked out there on the whole baseball swing, fixed that to a golf swing because I, I wouldn't go to baseball. So I, golf kind of picked up easily. Um, go later in my college years in Oklahoma uh, during the COVID time when it seems like the majority of golfers now is just all into golf yeah. because of the COVID time of going off, being off, going out and doing whatever. Um, but that's the easiest place to go during COVID. You're spread out from everyone and you just learn to have a good time with your buddies, even though you, you know, you're not good. You're just out there because everyone was out there. Yeah. So, uh, joined during that, but I was a sports management major during, um, or during college and this, I kind of just, I was like, well, if I'm enjoying this sport, might as well carry on from it. Um, after I graduate. So I did that, uh, he became manager at Crockett Ridge and helped me get my first job out of college. I moved there and then enrolled in the PGM program for uh, PGA to get my professional golf management. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So that's awesome. Man. The reason why I'm here is because this man right here got me, got me a good job out of college. So can't that's be good. more thankful for that right now. That's great, awesome. man. Um, yeah, you know, I can definitely tell maybe baseball is not your strong suit when you call it a baseball club. <laughs> that's what I was going to uh, <laughs> yeah, I was going to yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> hey, you, you know, all the same. As, as someone who's not a big baseball guy myself, I was like, it's not well, a club. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not really a club, but um, no, that's, dude, that's, that's pretty cool, guys. Yeah. Um, I think as we jump into this a little bit more, um, getting to know a little bit about just like kind of your stories and what you've seen with the dudes from the beginning um, of your time with us, it's going to be fun for our members to hear just a little bit more about you guys. Let's go ahead and take a minute and jump into our club notes. Um, let's talk about these. These are just some of our upcoming events that we have and things to keep on your mind. All right, so second Dudes of Hazard Open, uh, June the 3rd and 4th. It's going to be at the Country Club or the Golf Club of Bristol. Apologize. Um, and it's going to be the first um, major tournament of the year for us. Max, you excited for this one? I'm actually extremely excited for this. Yeah. I think I saw you got a full house that weekend hosting yeah, some dude. members coming into town. Is yeah. that correct? Yep. Corey, his grandfather, Drew, and then got our buddy from Alabama, Kyle. Kyle, yeah. Yep, Kyle's driving in. The, um, I mean, that's just in a couple short days from right yeah. now when this is releasing. I mean, this is on the Monday, the the week before the Open. So, who, uh, you know, out, out of you guys right there, Kyle, you, Drew, Corey, who's coming in last? Oh, man, do I have to say that? Yeah. Oh, crap. Okay. Probably me. Um, oh, come on. No, I'm just kidding, you actually. Can, you can no, throw I would, under the bus. Yeah, if I was going to say anything, probably Kyle. Okay. I'm going to throw Kyle under this one just because he does suck. But, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, so. and I don't know if this makes you funny better. I would have said you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate <laughs> you're, it. You're welcome. Um, but, no, that's, that's going to be a fun event. Then after that, we've got the first Member Member Classic, July 8th, Chucky, Tennessee, it's going to be the second major of the year. It's going to be 27 holes with you and another partner in the dude's hazard. You can pick whoever you want. It's going to be you and them for 27 holes. Yep. See who comes on the top. It's going to be a fun tournament. Uh, last year, we held the Open out at Graysburg. Everyone loves going out to Graysburg and playing, so we have that out there, which is really great with their 27 holes, the structure of 27-hole format. Uh, basically, everyone's going to get to play each of the nines out there. Um, each nine's a different format. What's great about the member member, um, there's going to be lots of moments to celebrate great shots with your partner. Uh, but one of the formats involved in this is the alt shot. And alt shot generates more looks of like, you've got to be shitting me from one partner to the other of just like, like, all right, man, you're in the middle of the fairway. All I need you to do is just start one nice up around the green for me. And this dude just goes like Hazel Rocket City out to the right, hit one's OB or into the thick stuff. And you just got to kind of turn around, look at your partner being like, yeah, that was, that was me. That was, that was my fault. So um, Alt Shot definitely creates for some fun memories, but that's, that's going to be a good tournament. And I think as you mentioned, or uh, yeah, second major of the year. So that's going to be one that you want to come out and play in. We're going to have a lot of our members out there and excited for that. Let's go ahead and uh, do a quick ad read, and then we'll go ahead and jump to the main section of this interview. All right. Now for a little um, ad from our sponsor. So Piney Flats Chiropractic, Dr. Sherry Wingate out in Piney Flats, Tennessee. All I will say is she's phenomenal. If you guys ever have any issues with 
musculature side, uh, neurological for um, nerves on that side, or if you have any type of spine adjustments, she will be your absolute favorite to go to. Uh, Dr. Sherry, thank you for everything you've done for me. I know there's multiple guys on this podcast and dudes that have been to her more than one time. Can't thank you for enough for everything you do for us. Everybody give her a shot. Thanks, Max. Yeah, Dr. Sherry's great. Um, you know, second year in a row being a proud sponsor of the Dudes of Hazard. So glad to have her aboard. Well, let's go ahead and jump into our main interview section here. We uh, got quite a bit to talk about, and thankfully, we got a little bit of time too to work with. So, Jade, why don't you go ahead and start this off? Tell us how you got involved at Crockett Ridge. Yeah. So, when I moved here, my plan overall was just to remain retired. I did 20 years, like I said, in the Air Force. So I had a little pension, a little disability to live off of, make ends meet, and that was kind of my goal. I didn't really know anybody out here, so I was going around all the local courses, kind of playing on my own. And Crockett was probably the fifth or sixth course I played. And it was right away. I mean, the track out there is just awesome. So between it and Graysburg, those were my two favorites that I'd played so far. And I was talking to one of the cart barn guys when I when I brought the cart back in. And he said, hey, how'd you like it? You know, what do you think of the course? And Well, yeah, the course is phenomenal. I said, my only problem is the personal problems. I don't know anybody out here. So I'm playing as a solo, and I'm running up on everybody and always in the way, I feel like. He said, hey, we got a help wanted sign up in there. We need some help in the pro shop. And we get out and play all the time as employees, so go sign up and come play with us. And That's kind of how it all started. I started working just part-time in the pro shop, getting out golfing as much as I wanted. Um, from there, obviously, it's turned into a lot more than that. Um, by the end of that year, I guess that was 21, there was a lot of things happened that year. We'll probably get into later with me getting sick and everything, but... At the end of the year, I came back and I was working and one of the guys that manages the property and manages a lot of the other owner's properties down in Florida, he came up to install some new point of sale system. Point of sale system, yeah, I guess that's what it's called. And he said, hey, you know, this place has kind of ran its own for, ran itself for 20 years now. And we're looking at, do we need to change direction or let the course go, let the property go, or what do we need to do? And I helped him, you know, on some of the techie stuff. He could tell I was somewhat knowledgeable and a little mm -hmm. younger than most of the guys out there. He asked me if it'd be something I'd be interested in, helping them stand up if they decided to go that route. And the more I thought about it and kind of what Stephen was mentioning, uh, I thought it would probably be a good move for me and probably open a lot of opportunities and yeah. doors for him. Uh, he was going through his sports management degree program right when COVID happened and an internship that he had set up through, uh, it's a triple A ball club out of Omaha got canceled because COVID canceled mm -hmm. all of triple A. So he basically didn't get to do an internship, didn't get any experience to leverage on resumes and stuff. So I said, yeah, this will be awesome if I can bring him out get him some experience working in this world, which is completely new to me as well. Yep. I mean, I manage all kinds of operations and have education stuff, program management, but it was all on the military side. So civilian side and golf industry was completely Greek to me. Uh, but we're, we're wading through it. Um, like I said, Steven's doing awesome out there, getting a lot of good experience. He's making a lot of good contacts, connections. Um, hopefully... We'll be able to get him a little more there and then maybe move on to one of the bigger courses and get some more experience with the same ownership company. So that's long story short, kind of how I got involved in Crockett and why I'm there now. That's a really good situation. I mean, especially coming here, just thinking you're going to draw pension and yeah. keep it easy being retired. And then boom, this thing kind of. So what, and what would laugh. you say your title is and like what you handle on the day to day? So my title is operations manager. Okay. Obviously, I'm not a PGA I'm a pro. I don't have any of the credentials for that. But Skill set could have, could have fooled me. Well, I'm a, I'm a quick study, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm putting it all to practical use watching you, Donnie. Yeah, that's it. 
Um, but yeah, so that's my title. I'm operations manager out there. I oversee all the golf operations. Uh, I know a guy that knows a guy, so I can, you know, direct lessons to people that I know that are willing to take that on. And I've got a good mentor that oversees the other properties that helps me wade, wade through the weeds that I'm not familiar with. So, so are you managing maintenance as well? I mean, no. So we've got our own superintendent. Okay. Um, and he's very experienced and he's actually worked on the operation side as well. So it, it's really, I mean, it's the perfect world for me. I grew up on the farm. I've got a lot of mechanical background, so I understand what he's dealing with. He understands what I'm dealing with. We work together very well. If he sees things I'm missing, he lets me know and vice versa. And it's, I mean, I, I've noticed already just in the industry, sometimes you get people that are pretty strong headed and take things personal and think they know it all and stuff like that. We're not like that at all. We're very humble and willing to accept criticism and try to work to make things better. That's how you make things better though. That's ultimately yeah, our it, goal. It is. I mean, we want to make that track the best in the area where people want to come play. I mean, I, I, I can at least say, can attest to that over the last little stretch, some serious improvements have been made out there. So. Yep. Yeah. I mean, give you all kudos on that. Yeah, your I think team you. are doing phenomenal with that. And I think some of that comes from having an outside perspective that's not been kind of pigeonholed into this is what golf should be, or you have to do it this way yep. in order to accomplish something. I mean, I come from a background where you, you figure out a way to get done what needs done. And so it, it it's worked well for us. Yeah. I was, I was kind of thinking, but I mean, I don't want to talk anything, but you know, we recently played a tournament where we played a second day at a different course. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, it was not in good shape. How does that make you feel going to other courses and just knowing, you know, how much better you guys course is being run, yeah. taken care of? I mean, is it, well, I'm, I mean, honestly, I'm blessed to have the team on the ground side that we have that, they have good knowledge of it and know what to expect. They're, my ground superintendent is from this area, mm -hmm. grew up here, worked here several years, but has experience down in Myrtle Beach and South Florida and stuff as well. So when I I see the other courses that maybe have been struggling a little bit through the winter and then I see things that I know my guy did earlier in the year that prevented some of that, you know, that's where I'm like, this is awesome. I, yep. I feel bad for them and I like to go play the other courses. <laughs> But we've been getting a lot of play because of that, because the course is in such good shape, which has its pros and cons, too. The more play you get, the more the course gets beat up as well. Yeah, I feel like it's just this endless ebb and flow. It, it really like is. You need people in there. Right. But, like, there's a fine balance of, okay, this is really killing us, especially, I'm sure, on some hot summer days that are going to be coming it. up later this year. And that's why you get those courses like Elk River and Diamond Creek that are, like, they don't get much play at all. Yeah, no, but they have the funds yeah. to do – anything they want anything so that's want. what keeps us pristine and like, that's that's really what's hard for a privately owned course that doesn't have memberships in an area like this where the cost of living's fairly low the economy's fairly low you can't charge exorbitant amount of prices for your rates to maintain the same area of grounds that the courses are getting the big rates for you know mm -hmm. can do yeah so we're it that's a very hard line to balance and if you raise the rates People lose their mind, don't want to play, complain and stuff. But you really have to do that in order just to make ends meet, especially yeah. in today's economy. I mean, fertilizer and grass seed, it's all just going through the roof. I mean, it's tripled in like the last 18 months. It's absurd. It's, yeah, it's that's unreal. We've heard from yeah. just some other people that have been on here that work in the industry just saying too, like just the cost of running stuff is It's tough. I don't know. I don't know how other courses stay in business. I mean, I know some of them are subsidized some of them are municipal some of them are state run things like that where they get some taxpayer dollars and stuff like that that helps obviously but the local privately owned courses that are just public play i i don't understand how they stay in business on a lot of places it's unfortunate and if you look at some of the stats uh there's a lot that aren't staying open yeah like there's a yeah. very large percentage since 2012 that have closed. Yeah. It's like this fine balance of 
there's there's a lot that goes into it right now yeah and it's like even though golf is growing is the demand for courses growing mm -hmm. is it yeah I mean, there's just a lot yeah. into it right now so steven where do you what do you come in and do on your day to day i mean what are you um, give I, us your down low on what you're doing out there my day to day for the past year year and a half i've been there um when he like he said when he started he I don't know if he got into it yet, but he got sick right when he started. So he had a part-time job. Um, he got sick, and I came in. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to come live with him while he's sick. Um, I went to the course. I was like, hey, my dad just got the part-time job. Can I take his position that you just hired him for? Like, he's obviously going to be out. Can I fill his role? Um, came in, did that. And at first, I was cart barn starter. I was trained in the pro shop, did that every now and then, um, three, four times a week maybe. Um, since then, I've gone back to – Oklahoma finished out my college and came back here in the past years, probably just been pro shop, um, morning to mid afternoon and during the winter time gets open and closed, but you're doing everything in there. Um, is as easy as of a job. It sounds you're still on your, on your toes, answering phone calls the entire time. Um, everyone's wanting to make tea times whenever it's open. That's what it's been for the past year or so. And then, uh, on the tournaments, helping set those up in the morning. I'm uh, getting a little more experience with that this year. Um, we've set up our own set up our own winter league uh, that me and Jade kind of ran, just to kind of test out, see what we're doing, um, how many guys are interested in coming out. And for the winter, we did pretty good. Um, I mean, we were probably averaging 15, 20 guys every Tuesday night on a random night in the middle of the week. Um, as long as it was warm enough, the guys were coming out and wanting to play. And so we're like, okay, we've got this summer league coming up too. Let's kind of set that up a lot more organized and structured. Um, and that's really taken off. We're averaging probably 25, 30 dudes a week coming out, having a good time. And when you're out there, there's two contest holes every week, uh, close to the pin every time on both par threes of the either nine front or back. Um, and through that people are, people at the course are also mingling as well, getting to know each other, hanging out. I mean, we've heard multiple tournaments where people are going out and doing other stuff and, uh, so over the time that I've been there, it's been changing into just pro shop duties, kind of managing more of events right now, doing some tournaments while still handling those pro shop duties as well, um, during the week. And then on the off time, whenever I come in, I might play nine holes, 18 holes during that. I'm, I might try to help out some cart barn guys, help them out cleaning up some cards and that little bit of stuff. But, uh, majority of duties are just pro shop right now and then handling the bigger tournaments. So yeah. trying to do that this summer and those have been a good success so far. I think that, that, uh, that Monday night uh, men's league that you guys are doing is great. So, yeah. um, I've I've been at Blackthorn with family for a while and stuff like that. And so we um, it started where it was you know Thursday night we did Thursday night men's league. Mm -hmm. It'd be you know sixteen guys and that's when it started. You know what they're up to now on a Thursday night? Sixty plus guys yeah. on a Thursday night for nine holes. Yeah. So I mean it, it'll fun. grow. It it's going to catch fire. It, it will. Yeah. Just keep at it because I, I highly encourage it because I've seen it go from that 15 to 60 guys. I mean, it's, I mean, getting yeah. 60 guys on nine holes is, I mean, it's, we, it's good. We figured, that's, that's, that's great. If you yeah. got guys yeah. coming out in the cold in the wintertime, it's going to be even better in the spring yeah. and summertime. So yeah. we just were like, keep it going. So. Yeah. So I really encourage that. I, I'm going to try to play as much. I've played once, but whenever I can, I've got a, mm -hmm longer work schedule now but yeah uh, i mean everyone's working max is over here working as soon as he pulls in the parking lot I mean, <laughs> doesn't even realize he's pulling into a loading he's, zone he's, so usually <laughs> right up until i like swing the club teen off in eight eight <laughs> minutes and he's like still just like crunching out work emails on the cart you're like he's the guy you got to tell 15 minutes earlier than the teacher no I, that, no, that's honestly, not true no, uh, no, 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 no. no there was only one time that, that i texted <laughs> jade ahead and i was like dude i am sorry i am coming all the way from i think it was in nicholsville or yeah. it's like it was like an hour and almost like two hour, hour and 50 minutes or something. And I was like, man, I'm going to be there like right a, at time. It sounds like a fun place <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah uh, tell me about it. <laughs> no, the, we have our members that we have to give fake tea times to, to get yeah. them on time. Yes. Matt I, Kelly is not one of those guys. Look, I don't he will be there on time. He, yeah. Typing an email. If I'm yeah, sober, he'll be there either. That's the question. Now these tournaments, I enjoy it, but I will always be on time. Good deal. Yeah, so, no, that's, deal. yeah, that's all I can ask for. Um, right. That's much better than the person that's like, People. hey. There's a couple. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple, but let's be real. But, it's like yeah, one or two that really yeah. just set the, the bar really high for uh, 
Cutting it close, we'll just we'll just put it that way. Shout out uh, Clay Dog and Zach. So, <laughs> cough, cough. <laughs> Jade, if you don't care, you guys are both references. You know, you got sick. If you don't care, just kind of yeah. uh, kind of go over that because I think you guys like to hear about that. Yeah. So, uh, so I retired from the Air Force summer of twenty, right when COVID was really starting to kick off pretty bad. Everything was locked down. Still, I didn't get to have a retirement ceremony. A lot of the normal stuff you have. And it never really impacted me other than that stuff. Um, come the next summer, shortly after I started working at Crockett, I got COVID. And I, I kind of felt funny one morning. And like I said, most of the guys that worked out, they were older. I said, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get tested because I don't want one of them to get sick or something. I really wasn't worried about myself. Well, it came back positive, so I, I quarantined for the 10 days or whatever, and it slowly, there were a couple of good days, but it kept getting worse and worse. And it got to where I couldn't breathe, had to go to the hospital. Ultimately, I ended up uh, on the vent for five weeks in a coma, um, dropped 40 pounds. They about lost me three times, I think. Told my wife to call the funeral home, start making arrangements a couple times even. That's how close it was. Uh, so that's what he's referencing when he's talking about I got really sick. So it happened just he was already planning to come out for the summer between his school years, and he came out just a little bit sooner to kind of help out with everything that was going on and obviously be here in case something bad happened. But I pulled through it, thanks to God. Uh, had a lot of really crazy hallucinations. I'll tell you guys about some other time. I want to hear that. I was about to say. But, yeah, that that that'll go down a long rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. But at the end, save that for the end of the hazard time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the That's end, hazard time end. Opening question of hazard time. Tell us about your hallucinations. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll just share the the end of it because I think that's important. Uh, I was in a battle the whole time during this time. I was in a coma in my mind and my hallucinations. And at the end, uh, for a little background, I'd kind of, I was brought up in the church, but I'd went agnostic after being overseas over in the Middle East on some deployments. I believe there was something up there, but I didn't believe anybody knew what it was. Well, in my last hallucination, the God I knew as a kid kind of came to me, and we had talks about why I was questioning who I thought the ultimate power was, and for lack of a better term, kind of negotiated on some things I had problems with, with organized religion and stuff like that. And by the end of that hallucination, it was like the most ultimate peace had fallen over me. I was no longer battling. I started waking up out of this coma and came to. So definitely blessed. I feel like God has definitely given me a second chance. So That's exceptional. I try to share that every time I get. I know this probably isn't. A good spot for it, but it's as it's good a great as spot for it. Yep. So, yeah, that's kind of my story about how I was sick and what we were referencing there. Mm-hmm. Glad you're here with us, Jade. Yeah, I mean, I'm seriously, sure. I, I think actually, no, it's not. I think I know anyone that's played with you, been involved with you since your time with us and the dudes has nothing but exceptional things yep. to say about you. Um, I mean, I know this weekend. Max Kelly is really looking forward to getting I was about stomped to say. by you. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, well, Jay's just killing me again, man. Bummer. Uh, you know, Max, uh, I don't want, I don't want to shit on you because everybody <laughs> shits on you. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I'll take <laughs> it where I get a little positivity. We're gonna right. go. Yeah, he's into the weird stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> no glass bottom boats around here, buddy. <laughs> We're gonna go out there and have a great round. That's what I'm going to predict. This I, I, I want to see it. Awesome. Let's go. Uh, the it, only thing I can guarantee I'm, from these two playing together, there's going to be a lot of hard swings. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Sure. Hard swings. A full commitment <laughs> look, to shots. Look, Donnie got on me this past weekend at uh, Country Club, John City Country Club. I, what was it? What hole was I hit a nine iron? You were hitting driver? <laughs> I was not hitting driver. <laughs> Who Were you hitting hybrid? I was hitting my hybrid. Yeah, okay. And yeah, Josh was hitting, Josh yeah. was hitting so driver. Josh was hitting driver. <laughs> Josh, well, okay, so to be fair, Josh has oh. not hit a ball that's moved to left all day. Not at all. Not at all. Every, everything's yeah. falling out right, like colossal misses. So I said, all right, Josh, aim at that pine tree. If you've played Johnson City on 14, out, yeah, the one I told you to aim yeah, at today. Yeah. Right. yeah. So just aim out there, just, just hit your slice. He's like, okay, I can do that. <laughs> Aims out there, hits it, hits the best draw I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, <laughs> ooh, yeah, that's going to be gone. So I hit the hybrid, and then like – 
Max, I told him to play smart that day. And so he's like on the tee with an iron, I assume like a seven or a five. Like, I mean, I, I don't really know. Tees off and hits this club to play it safe. Keep in mind, he ends up in the trees right on 14. And we were like, what was that? He said, I was my nine iron just trying to hit it out there. I'm like, your nine iron. It's a 410 yard par four. <laughs> <laughs> and you let off with your nine iron. <laughs> like, let's even now, worse. granted, I can still get on in two. Yeah, yeah, no. Like, so, you, you, you? you, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been an optimal word there. Why did you have to say that, Brad? Shut up. Yeah. Nine uh, iron, three wood. <laughs> <laughs> no, nine iron pitching wedge, but yeah, no, it was pitching wedge. Wait, yeah. He knew he was going to thin it coming out of the woods. He was going to fly it down there, right? Kind of. Okay. I anticipated like that, yes. There too. Like so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, for this weekend, I don't know if anyone knows this. You actually, I mentioned this to Steven. As I was looking through some pairings, I figured out some like fun featured groups that I'm going to focus on. And I'm going to have some drone footage and some audio mic'd up. You guys have definitely just gotten yourself mic'd up for the group that you guys are playing together. So I oh, hope God. you're excited for that. So I, right. I hope that this is on. Uh, no, it's definitely the, the afternoon round too. This this is going to be on holes. So definitely the I afternoon. Think is that disrespectful? My, my dad is not a cusser, but on the golf course, oh dude, he can he, rip. He, oh, he lets it rip. It's perfect. <laughs> he is a shot. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> He texted me the other day trying to talk trash. Did he tell you about this? He's yeah. trying to talk trash to me. I'm not even playing in the tournament. And he's like, look forward to beating your ass this weekend. I'm like, <laughs> like what, thanks. What? I'm putting it on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm actually not playing it. It's glad to be out here this weekend. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I, I think you, would you say something like it would be pretty easy because I'm not playing or something? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah. Honestly, you should kind of get on a little bit. And yeah. At the I end of it, being like, you know. Gotten this thing. Yeah. And when he missed a cut, be like, well, I didn't miss the cut. Yeah. Yeah. Loser. <laughs> also hopes that I didn't play. Um, uh, which, Shade, I mean, it'll be a good group. So we're playing the morning. So it's Mr. Fawn, Greg Fawn, Ron, my father-in-law, you and I. Nice. So, oh, the, the old people That's plus you. So I knew you'd be able to oh, socialize. Yeah, what do you say? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that what it is? You'd be able to put on. So. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> my option is you or Alex Minor. Like, obviously, I'm Minor. not sending Minor in with them. Don't throw Minor in that group. No. Okay. That's a good <laughs> He's a child. Uh, <laughs> Justin's going to have Justin's gonna have those guys hammered. <laughs> so who's pulling one of the 50 shots out of the bag every so, yeah, oh, that was J- fun. Jade, Ron, and Greg are going to come off the course just, <laughs> just dragging, <laughs> trying to keep up with him. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge, actually. Okay. Uh, you, you, hey, if you uh, want to take honestly, it on, I'm down either way. I actually, now, now that you say that, I, I wrote these featured groups down back home on like who I was going to like ride around with. Like, I basically figured I was going to ride around with like groups for like three holes at a time, focus on a couple people. I think it was actually definitely this group from the morning because I was like, you know, it'd be like fun, but it'd be kind of boring just to feature like a, a group of like you, Matt, Hugh, and like, I don't know, Jacob Long or Mattis, right? And it's like, oh, everyone's just taking great shots. I'm like, can you imagine the audio feedback off of Max Kelly after his 14th blown OB shot, right? <laughs> like, like this, this is what we're looking for right here. So, Jade, Jade, I don't know if you know this, but Max actually plays at a plus three when drinking. I can relate. 100%. In the drinking terms, he's a plus three handicap. Yes. It's scratch at minimum. A scratch at minimum, yeah. No, nah, man, I like to drink. It's a fun time. <laughs> Look, I'm not good at golf. At least I'll be good at that. <laughs> he's like, I, I, I I'll know take who it I am. Um, no, nah, I will say it'll be fun. I got to put some little goodies. Man, we're playing in the afternoon. Me and you, is that what it's lined up? Yeah. Um, the afternoon round, it's going to be me, you, Hugh, and Dad. That's a hell of a switch up. Dude. For what, him. Yeah, what happened there? <laughs> Wait, what? No, I don't think that's right. Hold no, on. That's no, it's that's me. Right. Yeah, that's not us. Why no. did you throw that? What? It, it, it's it's scary. Corey. I think Mark Byler's with you guys. Yeah, it's me, Corey Smart, Josh Dinkins, and Alex Minor. Never mind. Cut so, the <laughs> first. I was wrong. So, me, Hugh, and this. Mark. Yeah, there you and go. And Ron. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Never mind. That's still going to be a very fun group. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'll be really cool. Ron will be somewhere on the cut line. You and he will be battling for position. Mark's already thinking about who his two-man scramble partner is for the next day, <laughs> knowing he's missed the cut by. Well, okay. 
well, let's be real. Dude, the scramble's fun, though. The scramble's a blast. I have a blast with that last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I had a great time. Me and Mark won the scramble last year for people that missed the cut. It was okay. a great time. Yeah. Uh, Woohoo. With that, <laughs> yeah. it, it, you know what? That's a lot better than coming in like seventh at the invitational and like no one really gives a shit. Like you weren't going to win. You made the cut. Congrats. And you just touched <laughs> the tip and got your teeth kicked in for like four hours. <laughs> or you could have played hey, yeah. scramble, just flexing on people after you're making bogeys left and right, winning this shit. It's a great time for all. I mean, or you could have gone into the day like fourth and one. Or you could have gone into the day fourth and one. Who did that, Brad? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. <laughs> we all know who did that last year. Great run. Um, they're going to be wild this year. At the Invitational. I mean, just, again, in a couple short days, seeing how this shakes out. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting down there. we got some fun pairings. Um, how, how many make the cut? 12. 12. 12. Out yeah. of, what do we have? 20, 20, 20, 24. 24. 24. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you'll you just figure out who your partner's going to be, Jade. That's all, that's all you need to be looking at. Jade, I'll see you on Sunday. Damn. No, <laughs> see, what you got to do is you got to go through the list and say, I'm going to beat him. I'm going to beat him. That's, that's I'm going to beat him. You, I just, you, just got to beat the course. No, you actually have to beat people. No, because well, yes, you you, you actually <laughs> those people do. have to beat the course too. <laughs> I mean, technically, he yes. does have. I mean, he's he just came off point. there. I've he, got, I mean, we were talking about it before. He just had he just had practice rounds there, like three of them. Yeah, three. You played three times there. You played three oh, rounds. Wow, nice. <laughs> Twenty-seven holes, three days in a row. Twenty-seven. Good okay. Lord. That's, <laughs> Okay, yeah. I mean, he's seen it. Okay, so, <laughs> he's talking you, shit, motherfucker. Well, hey, hey, listen, 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 listen here. You, you know this I, I, from, from playing there. You, you play good golf, you can score well. Yeah. You start getting a little loose off the tee box. Yeah. Long, like, long day. You got to get off the tee box. You have to get wood. Oh, Wait. no, like, this is one of those things, like. <laughs> nine iron. <laughs> yeah, and I, nine iron into the woods right. If you're Max Kelly, still, that ball still went almost 200 yards. I don't care it, where it went. It, Nobody's hit a nine iron 200 yards in this whole thing. But the nine iron's not made to go 200 yards into the woods, right? For me, it is. Okay, I mean, that's maybe that's fair. Jade, you can say this though from the invitational or like from being up there and coming yeah. into this though. So, so tee shots really important, right? Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the greens and the greens are fast, really yeah. quick. Uh, the, the whole course was in great shape, to be honest with you. Some of the greens were actually unfair. I mean, yeah. number four, I think it is, going up the hill. That's a that's a hard – well, that's a hard – that hole plays a mile long. It does. It's actually truly the, up the hill. The green is sloped towards you. Yep. And the pin was at the very bottom. Oh, that's – Super fast. You couldn't stop it on the green if you were above. It's all right. We get it. You've played it. Oh, he's asking You've got an advantage. We question. know now. Hey, no, this hey, is Jay, good. Just, just keep that to yourself for when we it's play that morning. Yeah, that's it. Just that's all we gotta worry about. That's it. That's all we gotta worry about. Well, I'm gonna go play it Friday beforehand. So all I will say is, Calvin, you've got it coming, son. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I like it. Ooh, it's you, gonna happen. We before this starts, we we need some actual like something on the line wager between the two of you guys. Can we set up some lines? Because I've thought of a couple. Yeah, like, what are we thinking here? Okay, actually? like like you know, Max yeah. versus Calvin. Max versus Calvin. We could go. Um, Long who's going to win between the old people? Jade, yeah, Jade, yeah. Greg, Ron. <laughs> Come on, Donnie. The old people. <laughs> yeah, what? you're up there. I'm 45. Come on, guys. That's uh, what's yeah. The, what's, the, what's the closest to 45? Lower than that? Probably me. Yeah. Where are you at? I'm 30. Yeah, you're no. old. No. <laughs> we got some guys who are like 34. <laughs> <and 36. laughs> hey, you, got a, like, you got a decade. Uh, oh, based off of Ben Byler's hairline, he has to be at least 36. <laughs> Ben's not even going. <laughs> well, but if he was, <laughs> he would be 36 based off of his hairline. Um yeah, no. Yeah, it's you guys. You have a nice little three man group. You guys will all be friends. Dad, dad's up the dad. So. Yeah, and uh, he's I don't know player. how Mr. Fallen is. Greg's old. I about to say he's. Yeah, Greg's like thirty years older than Fawn. Fawn's thirty. Thirties. <laughs> so he's got to be in his sixties. Yeah, so or upper fifty, something like that. Like, I don't, so I don't know. Line on that. <clears throat> yeah, so we could, we could have who who wins the old man competition, kind of like an Iron Man event. It's like whose body holds up the longest. Uh, oh my 
<laughs> this is dirty. Um, it's not going to be wrong. You're the youngest yeah. of the age group. That's all the favorite. Yeah, this is, this favorite. is favoring you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you got to be the odds on paper favorite to win this. Yeah. All right. Side Give me some good numbers. Ron's a good putter, and you're a good and, uh, putter. Ron's a better player than I am by far. Uh, who else, who, what, what are some other fun little side bets? There's got to be a couple other good ones we can throw out there. We got a lot of family members coming out to play. So we could be like, which father? Ooh. Which father beats the son? Mm, we only have two of those. If you were coming, this would be better. We could come with like a like a combined score of the father son combos. Yeah, mm. which we could still do anyways. I think I I stuck you. Well, we all know who's winning, Ron and Brad. Ron, no. What? What? The father son combos between you and Ron. Is Ron carrying Brad? Well, he could. Ron is his father, so it'd be like his teammate. His teammate. <laughs> It's oh, I'm speed. sorry. I thought you were saying total against each other. My bad. Oh, no. My bad. Each other. And you think Ron's going to win that? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> this is not a stroke play event. Um, that's where things are going to get interesting. All, all I know is coming down the line, no strokes. People are going to have to make some good shots, not getting bailed out by a, a handicap. We, we got a pretty low max on the tournament, which will help keep pace of play moving and make it fun for everyone. But ultimately... Really looking forward to getting onto this event. Let's go ahead and try to jump back on track here a little bit. I think we we lost our way somewhere along the line, and we just sort of rambling about the Invitational, which is going to be a the shit. Beers of fun. The, the beers are flowing. The beers are flowing. The conversation's flowing. The the boys are talking. All right. So how'd you break your drip, Maverick? Oh, <laughs> you're pulling it. All right. Uh, started with some own ball rounds. Him and Keith were getting own ball round, and Keith had Keith had his is it cousin, son in law Matt. Yeah, his relation. His something, <laughs> something there. They were playing. It was those two against me and Jade. Jade was playing his own ball round. So we're like, all right, just best ball, either team that's score. Uh, I mean, up till hole 12, it's a good time. We're, drinks are flowing. Hole 13, Jade says, let's make this a match between you and I, the last five, last six holes. I was uh, not playing well. He wasn't. No, he wasn't. And this is the only reason he knew. This is going to get him playing well. He's throwing it in someone's head. <laughs> Anytime I He's got to get in someone's against, head to play yeah. better. He's got to get in someone's head. I do better under pressure. Don't let him get in your head. Yeah. He got in my head. Last five holes. I mean, we are teammates all the way up into hole 13. And he turned on you. No, yeah, he, he definitely we did. We were still teammates. I was trying but to get us both to throw play better. Why do you throw a teammate match into a solo <laughs> match between me and you? Because I know I play better. But you know it's going to blow the team up. We probably lost to Keith and Matt. It didn't blow the team up because I did really well in the last five holes. <laughs> <laughs> There's 50% of the team gone. <laughs> the other 50% he needs your 50%. Gone, but but he's like, like, I, I got my 50%. Okay, well, anyways. So his 50% carried all the way to the 18th, apparently. Mine did not. I was 16. I blew up. I hit a best drive I've ever had on 16. Proceeded from 50 yards to chip it four times. Mm. Twice went in the bunker, bunker twice to get out. Rough, rough hole. Hard seventeen yep. somehow on the eighteenth tee box. It blew up. Let me let me set the stage. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sunday, over eighteen. Looking out, beautiful, no, beautiful. No, we're the last group on. We're the, the last day. group. There's no one behind us. And I think Keith said somebody said, "Oh, we need to get some content, you know, for the, or for the instant for Crockett Ridge and stuff." So we start setting up to take some pictures, teeing off and stuff. So how'd your tee go? The first or second? They both are oh. bad. <laughs> oh. first, first one left into the trees. We're playing the tiger tees, as he likes to call it out there. There's a secret tee box up behind 17. Um, but yeah, playing that one, dead straight, you don't have any water to the left if you're playing from that tee box. It's just You keep it right and you're good. I duck hooked one further left in the water into the trees. I was like, all right, I'm going to hit another one. I hit the second one, same exact shot, same exact line, trees. And the club is flying through the air, and I hear Keith in the background say, oh, no. And all I hear is crunch. And I look at it, I was like, oh. It hit the tip of where the head of the driver meets away from the shaft. So the very tip of mm, the cross. Hit, yeah, scuffed it all up. There's a crack right across the top. All the way through to the shaft, right on the cart path. Just yep. Like, oh man. I mean, he, there. I could have thrown it in the bushes and been okay. Been fine. I'd been like, oh, I threw a club eighty yards in the woods. I'm still okay. But right on the cart path, it was killer. I wanted to cry. 
I want to cry right now. I'm talking about this. Talking my, about it. This He's is like, my baby, my driver, and I threw it as hard as I could and then broke it. So the one lesson I'll take from golf is don't throw a club unless you want to pay for a club. Don't throw clubs. Yeah, period. Like, like throwing clubs <laughs> really just doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't. It, it doesn't. The I was thinking about it today. I played like shit at Crockett before, um, and I was like, I'm mad. I'm going to throw this ball left-handed. I threw it as hard as I could. It was goofy as shit. I'm sure it was. Threw it as hard as I could, and it got everything out of me. Yeah. That's the key. Just throw a ball left-handed, you'll be good. Don't throw a club, throw a ball. <laughs> I mean, one's a little bit cheaper than the other one. To I'd rather pay thirteen dollars than five hundred for a driver. What? Dude, what, what golf balls? balls? Are you Third, for $13? Yeah, what dollars. golf balls? Sleeve. Are you? Okay, sleeve. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> just on the whole sleeve. <laughs> he, he said this is still cheaper than a five hundred dollar driver. So, uh, like, they, who even cares? Uh, two fifty, three dollars Pro V. <laughs> Man, it's it's been a minute since I've done a club. Thankfully, actually, that's not true. I was about to say I threw one Saturday, but it was in celebrating. So, yeah, I know. A little bit different. That's different. Yeah, yeah that's no, a little was, bit different. He was excited for that. That was a good. I'm actually glad I didn't screw that up. I kind of just actually like just tomahawk spiked my nine iron. Yeah, it was beautiful. Ch- chipped in <laughs> for par uh, from nice. 60 yards out with my nine iron. Nice. So just how you drew it up, I know that's like your stock yardage for hitting that club, um, especially on your fourth shot on a 300 and. 30 or like 320. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, not, not, not really how you want the round to be going, but that was fun. Uh, I did just absolutely tomahawk spike it though into the ground. Wow. Chest bump, Justin. Yep. <laughs> Could have knocked him over if he wasn't built like a brick house, but that, but here we are. Um, since you guys have joined, what is your favorite event that you guys have been in the dudes for? Well, I've only been to a few. Um, I'd say the Masters event, just because for me, not being a very good player with it being a full handicap, kind of brought the, it makes you feel like you got a chance. Yeah. Whether you do or not, at the end of the day, I mean, look, Miner won it. That didn't have anything to do with the handicap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking shit. But really, like anybody can win if you use a full handicap. So that makes those exciting for those of us that don't typically have a chance to win. Yeah. And it was fun all around, even with the wind and everything else. It was that was a time. windy round. Yeah. I also always, and just so anyone knows what's coming on here, Colin and whatever, minor slander is always appreciated. Feel free to <laughs> throw it out whenever and however you want. Uh, just like Max Kelly and Calvin slander, always appreciated, <laughs> except by Max Kelly. Um, Steven, what's, what's uh, I mean, you, you played in two as well. So, I mean, already this I, year in the young yeah. season. I, pl- I played in two like competitive ones that I felt a little nervous about, the Stableford and the Masters. Um, top three in both those, and it came down to the end on, I mean, every, both of those events. Yep. I mean, Stableford, I first shank of the day on the 17th tee box, and I knew, I was like, from there it's going downhill. Lost my tee, lost my drive on the next shot. Um, most fun, though, was Pine Oaks, the Ironman tournament. I played with Will, and I was like, I'm the smallest guy out here playing with the most insanely yeah. massive dude I've ever seen in my life balancing out the other side of the cart with me. Not only that, like you're playing with Kevin Nelson and Ty Ship. Like, I was like Ty Ship is the smallest guy in this group and he's like 6'3", 240. And it's like, and then we had Stephen Bell with the group. I, I was in, I was out of place, but <laughs> it was fun because they I knew they were all swinging as hard as they could. So I was like, I'm swinging as hard as I can right now. We're having fun. Screw this it. is nothing serious. Just go at it. I mean, yeah. we saw some good shots. We saw some bad shots. I mean, Kevin, or not Kevin, Will hit one, didn't hit the ball, but he watched it. One of my favorite swings on the, on the um, Instagram. I think. Oh yeah, he hit one and watched it, but it was right by his feet the entire time. Have you guys seen this one? <laughs> oh, oh he, he's on the par five on on the front, right it's next like to the road. Five, next to the oh, road. It's just a tough one because it, it's a little there. bit above his feet, and like I mean, he winds up for the swing, and I mean, just misses the entire ball. Takes this huge divot like behind the ball. Loves the shot. He loves the shot. Like, like he's like he's tracking posing. it, like posing, and it's like, <laughs> hmm. Well, <laughs> the, the ball's still on the ground. Yeah, uh, gotcha. yeah. Like, oh, nice try, buddy. That so that was probably the most fun I've had. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm having fun every single tournament outing I'm going to. Is it's a good time every time. Uh, one, it's yeah, good time. Uh, Pine Oaks. The entire day of that morning to end. All the way through the end of the night at downtown John City was a fun time. I mean, that's good, man. Had some people leave home early and some people stayed till the end of the night. It was awesome. It was. So that was a fun event. Um, you know, kind of feeding off of this about Stephen real quick. 
um, as we were finishing up the Stableford, you know, Stephen was in that final group, and I think you were the leader going into that might, final day. I might have been. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, may, maybe this sounds like a, a little critical of you or whatever, but I think at the final point, like you look at this, the golfer you are, to even putting yourself in that final group is a huge yeah. feat. Like when you looked at the people you were playing with in that round, you were playing with Brad, Hugh, and Zach Hill, who's a who's a he, tournament winner for us oh, yeah. as well. And so you're like, wow, I'm playing with some good people. I played with Zach three times, and yeah. it's been fun every time. Yeah. I mean, he he carry, he can putt. Yeah, he can. If he's, well, if he's knocked into the green, he's going to putt. That, that's what he is. When, when Zach's hitting his iron shots, he's outrageously dangerous. Yeah. He can make putts and from putt from off the green like no one else's business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being in that spot, it was cool watching you come down the final stretch. Maybe you didn't get the result you wanted, mm -hmm. but it was really cool on my end running this event and like, I've got to see the way that Ron's looked at Brad while Brad's played in situations. It was neat watching Jade watch you on the side coming up and playing. And then like, yeah. yeah, like it was like, I could tell that he was like, damn, like, you know, he's probably not in a shot to win this right now, but I could also tell that he was proud just watching you yeah. come in down the final thing. And like, you know, the masters maybe didn't work the way out for you, but mm -hmm. I think if you keep on putting yourself in these final groups, I'm, what, that's oh, what I've been the, yeah, is, just, just keep swinging the club and playing the game. You, you're the, the you're first get one like two competitive tournaments I've played in. Yeah. I've come down to the last hole where everyone's watching, yeah. and I'm like, oh, that throws a lot of pressure on there and sneaky pressure. Like no, you don't sneaky. you don't think it is? That's what I'm saying is like, oh, it's just a couple of my buddies. No, oh, it it changes once you get to 16, 17, 18. It's like 16, him and Justin Strong watched us. And then 17, you had you guys up by the 18th mm -hmm. tee box. And I was like, oh, then there, now there's like 8 to 10 people watching us. And we got a tee box, or tee box looking at the green of 18 at Elizabethton. I was like, there's 15, 20 people watching this. I mean, even with the Masters, I was like, Miner's going to hit something ridiculous, put it in. He did that. Yeah, so I, I wasn't insane. too far nervous about that one. But the stable for I was like, I just hit a great drive. A little, little slice into number 10, par 3. Couldn't find the ball. I was like, I like I feel bad because I hit a good drive, but I can't yep. find it. So I've got to hit, take my drop, hit the third one out of there, and go from there. So I was like, after the third one, I was like, I'm out. So, yeah, it, you kind of you finish it, and you're like, oh, there's like 20 people watching. This is a good feeling to have coming into the end of these tournaments. Like the last two or three holes, it's like pressure's on you. You got to perform. You got to perform. I mean, Brad, when you won your your open, I mean, what? There's probably 25, 30 of us sitting around the green. Uh, at Graysburg last year when you came I up there was more yeah, yeah I mean like it was really cool like I, I'm glad I'm not having to play under that pressure it no it I don't trust my golf swing quick. under that many people watching especially on like a short right miss I'm like ooh. I mean well, a lot of people in the, at the, zone. At the open at Graysburg it kind of I guess I I didn't know at the time but I had it kind of just I yeah, had like, you had a few like it, there wasn't as much drama as maybe around these last two tournaments yeah. but the you invitational, it came down to me and Hugh just standing on the 18th tee box. And yep. It was going to be between us. And we both like smoked it down the middle, a par five, and then both had within like 15 foot putts for Eagle. Yeah. And I mean, it was like, if and someone makes one. this, it could make the, it could yep. make or break it's, who's and winning. It's really like yeah. you're, for the first however many holes, you're having a good time with your partner. But if it comes down to you two oh, or yeah. you in the it, last group, you're like, all right, I'm, it, it changes is, a little bit as the round switched. goes. The last few holes, and you're like, all right, I'm helping myself out. Whatever you are asking, I might say something back to you, I might not, but I'm locked in. Yeah. yeah. And that's all it is. It, it, it's fun, though, in our lives where you don't draw a lot of super competitive things, even yeah. if it's, on a casual thing like a fun golf club it's, it's fun to have those moments competing down the stretch of events yeah. so steven i just want to encourage you just keep on i mean kind of trucking away at this put keep on putting yourselves in these final groups i know it took you a minute to win yeah he i was, was getting ready to say, say yeah I, mean, I could tell uh, yeah hugh has had i mean i think he's had a third in like three mm -hmm. seconds before he won that stableford yeah and that's his first one so i mean just keep it might going. take a minute. Just keep going to it. Yeah, it, it, it was. And then you get, I mean, it's, it's just everything and everything in between. Like sometimes you just got to have two lucky hot days in a row of golf. And it, it's hard to put nine together. I mean, putting two 18s together is ridiculous. It's tough. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to win events. Like, and it's easy to look at a scorecard and say, or like a, a roster of who's coming for a trip and like, oh, I can beat them. But it's like, yeah. Yeah, man, but when your good shot kind of falls apart on you and you can't rely on it, then then what's your move? And it's just like golf just gets hairy out there. And it's mm -hmm. it's 
it's fun for me running the events. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. We, it, it's nice to see recognizable names from the club winning events, but it's really fun having new guys step up and, and get a dub and, I mean, just competing for the final spots. It's, it's pretty fun to watch that. Um, Steven, let's go ahead and enter this, uh, end this interview session with, um, you mentioned earlier with the, the PGA trying to get, uh, I guess I'm already yeah. sure what I'm fishing for on that, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about I mean, that. At this point, I don't even know what you're fishing for too. Cause I don't know where I'm going. Um, there's like, so right now starting at Crockett, I've been working pro shop last year and a half and this year been taking on some more tournaments some leagues, stuff like that, trying to organize that. Um, just seeing how much I can handle right now. But throughout that, I've during the winter times, I know it slows down. I entered a PGM course, which is, I got my sports management degree um, at Oklahoma State. And then from there, it's like, okay, where do you go? Do you go to some internships around, like he was saying, baseball, minor leagues? Do you do that kind of stuff? And because of him getting the job manager at, the, uh, at Crocker Ridge, he was like, I've got open positions for you anywhere you want. Come in here and we'll start going with however you need to. And so worked pro shop the entire summer before the winter at the winter time. I was like, all right, Hey, around November entered this PGM program to start getting my credibility towards some, like I said, right now, I don't know where I want to go, but I could go anywhere from instructing lessons to, uh, operating the inside management of the course or anything like that. So two separate sides right now, I'm in the qualifying side of it. Uh, I just got to finish one more course and then, from there, I've got to pass a player ability test, which I was talking to Hugh. Um, he said it's, he said, which I also agree with, it's a lot easier now to do it than it used to be. He said, like, last few years before they changed it up, he was like, you got to go two rounds, th uh, 18 holes each, playing 36 holes. You got to shoot a 75 both rounds, put them back to back, and that's how you pass that player ability test. Um, right now they've made it a lot more lenient. I can go out, play two rounds, 36 holes and shoot 175, um, and carry that over into the next registration, which might be three months later after I have a lot of practice, but I don't have to get both of them in the same day. So he nice. said it might be a lot easier right now. Um, that's what I'm really working towards is getting the player ability test. Like I've only broken 80 a couple times. Uh, my best was two nine holes combined, but other than that, there hasn't been a true like 77, 78, nothing like that yet. Yeah. So, and I've got to shoot two 75s within to pass this test. So, um, right now, trying to really refine my skills around everything, but inside on the operation side of Crockett is running um, tournaments, doing a lot more events. Um, I've been past couple of weeks talking about tournaments coming up the next yeah. month, getting anything like that set up with them. So, that's really been my focus right now, um, helping all the customers out putting on whatever kind of events anyone wants to put on. I mean, we're hosting a lot more than, I mean, just tournaments where we got small, the small league on the Mondays, uh, used to be Tuesdays, but on Mondays now. And then even we've even had, uh, people looking for like prom, uh, yeah. photo shoots, like, Hey, can we come out, use your pavilion? Yeah. Can we, can we come That's out awesome. use maybe just a hole? Like this senior wants to take his girlfriend to a golf yeah. hole and take a picture around there. Like, Hey, yeah, we'll do it. Just around one of the best holes of the course and do it. So, that's anything smart. small events yeah. anything to help customer out that's kind of what i've been doing i mean i worked since high school to college is all customer service so that's where I, really where i'm at right now is helping the customer out there so trying to give them the best um experience possible while they're out there have you so, talked to jeremy at all or about I, him i talked to him recently about pj hope um trying to get some rounds and everything set up in some clinics at Crocker yeah. ridge so. i need to get you in contact with jeremy so i mean jeremy um if you don't know so he started out as just uh kind of same thing you know, working in the pro shop, doing whatever at Blackthorn. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. he was the assistant pro at Blackthorn. Then he um, eventually was the pro at Johnson City Country Club. Now he's our pro at yeah. He's a Hazard, and uh, he's a he's a great dude, and he's uh, mm -hmm. done all that stuff. So I mean, I'm sure he'd have any advice, any info you're looking for, leading down the steps. Um, um, he'd be more than happy to help. I know him; he's one of my best friends, and so yeah, I'll speak for him that he will help you. <laughs> If you ask, I, I like, I definitely could use his help. The first time I talked to him was a couple, a couple days ago, actually, I was working at Crockett and he called up asking for, um, seeing if we could put some clinics on or some, uh, rounds for them to go out for the PGA hope to practice and everything like that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, right now I can't make the decision. So I'd give it to Jade, but yeah, like definitely getting in touch with him and working stuff out for the course and myself would be really good to have. Yeah. He does a lot of great work with, I mean, 
and he works hard. I mean, he does his day job, and then he has, you know, he's a teaching pro, and he gives lessons to kids. He mm-hmm. has a junior league team. Yeah. And he has the um, veterans program that mm-hmm. he puts on. Um, he's doing a lot of stuff, and uh, I can't commend him enough for everything he's doing. But yeah, he's doing for sure, job. pick his brain because he will um, he'll lead you down the right path. Good you, deal. And help I'll, you decide what you want to do. Contact with him. All right, guys, we're going to head into Hazard's time. My personal favorite. Start it off. First question is to Steven. Give me your first thought when you hit the tee shot at 17 on Elizabethan. You want the, sh- the, the, the thought before the shot or after the shot? After. After? I knew this was going to happen. Uh, before the shot was, <laughs> this is the hole that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, shank that off. I mean, there's a, there's a whole Inside group question, of- do you think if you would have hit before Hugh, you still would have been because I, I mean to be honest, he, with he you, threw a close. He one. threw a dart. He threw there. a really okay. good one. You're you're coming in with a guy. You know you're battling it. Yeah. Then too, they they knew it. Yeah. And he threw it. He hit first, and he threw a dart he right threw at a dart. Him. Um. I mean, yeah, probably. If I went before him, there would probably have been a little less nerves, being like, "Oh shit!" Now I got to throw one even closer than that, or just on the I'm green. I'm just curious. Did that cross your head? Like, oh yeah, hit one close. I need to hit a good one. Yeah. Here. No, it definitely did. Um. The shank off to the right was just the worst absolute thought that went through my head, and that's the one that happened. So, but uh, yeah, definitely thought about, hey, I need to put one on the green now because he's gonna. I you with you, it's thinking if you hit the green, it's one putt birdie, especially on a par three. So, I was thinking that. Um, but yeah, hit shanked it to the right, second shot into the tree. I had thought I hit the window to get onto the green, hit a tree, put me right back where I was, and got. Took a different route to the top of the green and then back down. And from there, I was like, oh, well, I shot myself in the foot on this one, but third place is not bad. So I'll just finish it out. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. When I, I was coming back down 18 and I was like rounding the turn coming back, like from 18 T box to 17 green. And I'm like, check and see where everyone's at in the group. And I look and I just see you down in this gully. And I'm like, yeah. Ooh, oh, yeah. It was he's supposed to be at this group back here who's <laughs> not with him and i was like okay well at least he can hit a good recovery shot and then i watched you hit that tree and i was like okay this is over yeah um i was like that's yeah that's like, what that, happened no, like dude, that was so tough to watch but yeah i mean good good spot i'm not i'm not spot. mad about it i mean going i took a sh- took a shot on 15 uh i mean in the water barefoot pulling off a of max kelly here i was that, like that was a, it was a good shot. time yep I was like, if this is a tournament to save the stroke on, I'm going to do it right here. So I, I swung at it and ended up good on the green. Um, but, no, it was a fun time the entire tournament. Played well in my home course, which is a given. You, you'd hope I would. I mean, I still put up 90s there, but it was still good good tournament, good weekend. All right. Got a question? One of us? Any oh, of us? Got sure a question. Fired, no. Donnie, nice. what are your thoughts about going to see the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie? I'm not. Not all right. That's a good answer. You got to yeah. ask someone now. <laughs> I just wanted I wanted to get somewhere away from me because I didn't know what I was asking. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't want to do this. Uh, Jade, since joining the Dudes of Hazards, who has been your favorite person you have played around to golf with? I know you've gotten to play with some cool, cool people. Yeah, I really have. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> man, that's a hard call. So for the most part, I've played with Justin and Kevin and Ron the most, I'd say. Mm-hmm. I probably have a little more in common with Ron, being we're older, and he's great to be around, so I love playing with him. And I've got to play with him during the men's scramble league out of yeah. Crockett as well. But Justin in the fridge make me feel young again, too. <laughs> <laughs> so I go out and, you know, we get together and drink some beers, too. So they're good guys, too. I love them all. Oh, that's such a PR answer. We asked for a name, and it's like a group of three. And well, like, everyone's great and special. There's the like a hundred of them. I narrowed it down to three. That's good enough. Yeah. All right. Who, who do you, what um, do you got for us? So Brad, since we've got somewhat similar situations where – both father and son are in the groups and we talked about the pressure and whatnot. So I'm like, when the pressure's on Steven on those, I don't know if I should be around or encouraging him or, cause I do get in his head and I fuck with him. When well, you're playing against me. me. Playing. Oh yeah. But when he's in a tournament, I want to cheer him on. Absolutely. So how do you feel about that when Ron's there and you 
coming to the end. Does it make you feel better having him there, or does it put more pressure on you? <clears throat> well, to be honest with you, he hasn't he hasn't been there when I've won at any of the, he wasn't at the either of those tournaments. And then before that, um, he was. So I was in some like shootouts and stuff at Blackthorn tournaments where you could win, and he was there. Um, no, I kind of just I kind of see it as he's wanting to see me kind of go back into the old days of sports and baseball when he's on yeah. the you know wanting to watch yeah. me mm-hmm. see me succeed, do well, and try to win it. I mean, I don't take it as any pressure. I take it as him just wanting to you know just cheer me on, being there Sweet. for support. Yeah, that's how I take it. Good stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's fair. I yeah. mean, I, I feel like if my if my dad played golf, that's how he'd be. He'd be yeah. he'd be rooting for me in those situations to yeah. do as good as I right. could and understand that. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. it may work out. It may not. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Let it fly. So, Max, <clears throat> uh, invitation trip coming up. Are you even going to bring golf shoes? Or are you just playing the whole <laughs> weekend barefoot? Barefoot's not bad. Yeah. So flip flops on the way there. Okay. And barefoot the whole way through. Okay. I, I mean, it's accepted at all, right? Only, oh, only yeah. Fair. Like, I, I, you would agree. I this, think so. You they're they're not going to make them put shoes on on the first tee. You're not even going to see anybody. No. No no chance. I say that. When we were there, it was during the week. I bet there wasn't 25 people played the no. course that day. So, we actually have a – there's a full tee sheet in every single tee, sh- tee slot on Saturday when we play. Yeah. But, like, Friday morning when we play, like, I'm playing a practice round there. We're playing at eight thirty, and we're the second group off on the day, and then the next group behind us is nine twenty. Yeah, I already told Alex. I said like, yeah, I'm like bare, barefoot round. Yeah, full eighteen holes. I don't for think us. they'll have an issue with it at all. Like no, I said, I didn't. They really, want people to play this course. I didn't really see anybody out there on the course, like no. worker wise or whatnot, ranger wise, any of that. Yeah. I think there's only been one time I've ever been told to put shoes back on, and that what? was asinine. Yes, where was it? Say it. I mean. It country, was asinine. John City Country Club. Ah. <laughs> yeah. He was, I, I and guess. my feet, I mean, and all my right, I mean, it had what? Soaking wet. I'd been playing in cloth shoes. Well, oh. like, I'd rather Barefoot play. the best choice. I'd rather yeah, and it was on, like, foot. hole 15 yeah. on a Sunday afternoon, and someone that was, like, 82 was years old saw him from a mile off with their eagle eyes, apparently, and went and told the pro <laughs> shop. So it's like, are you kidding me? And I mean, the pro shop was cool about it. I mean, he was just like, look, he's like, I get it. He's like, different generations. He's just like, put them back on. I'm like. You got some new ones? Yeah. Like, <laughs> this, like they were in the back of your push cart and they were soaking. Yeah. They were like dripping water from the back of the push, push cart, cart. And they're like, I'll throw those shoes back on, boys. And it's like, no way. Yeah. Yep. Like, that's insane. Yep. Out of Jade and Max, who's going to have the most Maxes this weekend? Because I know they're both going to be swinging driver as hard as they can. Yeah. That's that's the one thing I can guarantee you off the tee box. They're swinging as hard as they can. Okay. I'm Max. That's a good line. But you make a line for that. I mean, he'll put up some maxes every now and then. Yeah, not so, often. So here's the thing: every if, now and then, if each of them is just left to their own, if you make Max and him both hit driver every hole, Max It'll records more maxes. Yeah. It'll be me. if you let them both play their own club every tee box. Well, no, see, because he's still just going to take driver. Like he's going to know the. <laughs> he's going to be like, I know I need to hit my nine iron two hundred and four yards out into the fairway, and he's still going to be like. Driver, <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't have to, uh, but I need to. Ah, God, that's that's a tough. Uh, I'm gonna go Max. I'm. Gonna, I gotta give an answer. I'm gonna yeah, go Max. I'm going Max. More Max is for Max. So it sounds like we got a few good lines running for this <laughs> yes. weekend. And why am I in all three or uh, three out of four now? <laughs> <laughs> you think we're Most stopping in, at four? Most entertaining Max golfer. Is, yeah, Max will be on every line, one way or the other. You'd be a good long shot to win. Like someone would have to get some great odds on that. I think you guys forget the cut and you two go head to head. It's going to turn out good for one of you. What do you think the odds would be to Max to win? Like if I, if you were going to make a bet with me, what for Max to win? What do you think? What the, against you or no? Like I'm going to be I'm going to be the bookie. Like Donnie's going to bet with me. Oh, I'm yeah. going to give him five hundred to one, thousand to one. Uh, the number that sticks in the mind is eighteen hundred to one. But I think that's. It's pretty good. I was thinking twenty five hundred. Okay, that's like the going rate for the long, <laughs> you the not, long shot. The long you shot. Do not get any drinks this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so Stephen, what would you say? That's a compliment. Then you bet on yourself. <laughs> that's I'm thinking eighteen hundred. Eighteen. I think eighteen. Like it's what, fair. What do you think, Brad? <sighs> to be honest with you, it's probably eighteen thousand. Dude, I'm better than that. <laughs> 
but to win, I mean, that's just a with, slap to my face, man. Are we, are we talking most maxes or who's winning the round? No, we're talking about the him to win to beat every other guy there with no oh, shit. Oh, be every oh, that's see, a different yeah, yeah. line. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like that, that's that's such see, a high no number. Way, I mean, that's no. Uh, uh, okay, West I mean, no, 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 not to be yeah, yeah. Like that's no, not he, 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 no. he can't. That's what I'm saying. Okay, here here's a better line. Max to make the cut. That you know, but we talked about plus eighteen hundred. I still stand with that. I would take that bet. I, plus 1800 I would take that bet. So how we, much would you put on that? I'd put 20 bucks on that. We yeah. literally talked about What's that payout. Yeah, someone wrote I'm not good at math. <laughs> but see, don't do math in public. <laughs> see, I don't know if I want to make the cut, though. Like that. Max, you're good at math. The scramble was fun. 30, the scramble was so much fun thousand? last year, man. I think scramble was so much like, fun. I'd rather yeah, going into that, I don't know if I could be 10, see, 11, this or 12, is, being like, oh, I, I would grind my way to this win, I, or if yeah. I'd rather be in the damn scramble and be so, like, I'm having fun. We were talking it. about like, like, what do to do if pay- someone ties for 12th or something <laughs> like that. And Mattis was like, dude, just do a scorecard playoff because he said, realistically, no one wants to actually be 12th because they realize they have no chance of winning the yeah. next day. And they also didn't get to play in the two man scramble. So yeah. basically, twelfth is a bad spot to be in. Like you, you don't you want to be. Need I don't to miss the cut or be like top seven. Yeah, yeah, or like unless twelfth is in a nine stroke swing. I mean, you yeah, have some yeah. tees and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, no, it's like, not yeah. undoable. But it's if not. you're like if you're forty strokes back and <laughs> you're still twelfth, yeah. If you're twenty two strokes off the lead in twelfth, you're like. <laughs> Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I'm probably not turning Looking in my career to tomorrow. Yeah, you're like, okay, I'm tipping it out at a course I've played twice. Probably going to turn in my best round of all time. Let's do it. No one ever, um, <laughs> unless you're Max Kelly. Well, guys, we'll look into seeing what we can do for this line. Um, I think if we can we some, place our bets with Dudes of Hazard or yeah, I mean, you made the we're, line. We're just around the corner from starting our own sports book, betting on our own, <laughs> <laughs> on our own members on how they do in our tournaments. All I know is Max Kelly would be the most bet upon person in the Dudes of Hazard, one way or the other, forever. Well, because you know it why, right? So polarizing. It, it's just like you, you want to see it happen one way because or the he's other. The most unpredictable. He is. He can play well and hit these miraculous shots and make birdies, but he yeah. also can make that max. Out of anywhere. Like that. When it only yeah. takes two strikes. 13 feet off the I, green. That's why I think these two are the most even okay. guys in yeah. the field. Yeah. yeah. Like just, across just the entire ride. board, these two are the most even all the way across. Um, I've seen Alex Holloman play and Nolan Die. Don't forget them. S- sneaky, untalented golfers that you okay. can't forget about. <laughs> um, <laughs> sneaky, untalented. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't let them sleep on you. And so is that the group they're in? Sneaky, untalented? I, I want to. <laughs> is that a hazard? I actually think our hazards time session just ended. Otherwise, I'd answer that. Uh, but to answer is yes. Um, anyways, great episode. Yeah, I know, guys. So thanks everybody for listening. Here, we want to thank you to Stephen and Jay for coming out doing the podcast with us, guys. It was a blast. Yeah, awesome time. For us. Yep, fun. Yep. Good time. Mitch, thank you as always, dude. Hey, thank you. See you next time. Keep it classy, dudes.